So this part of the video is going to be demonstrating the evaluation of your deep tendon reflexes. You want to make sure that you're checking reflexes that the patient is relaxed um, and but that the tendon is on some kind of stretch otherwise you won't get a reflex from it. So we want to make sure that we test them in both upper and lower extremities and we test them bilaterally. So we're going to start with the upper extremity and the biceps reflex. So this is a reflex of on the biceps tendon. And what we want to do for this one is, again, the patient's arm is to be sort of relaxed in the patient's lap. Um, and I'm going to put pressure on the biceps tendon in order to stretch it a little bit. And then I'm going to strike my, the tendon with the reflex hammer on my own finger. I should be able to feel the reflex in my hand, even if I can't see it um, in the muscle contracting. Alrighty. Again, for that one, you could see the arm jumping, but I could also feel the reflex myself. When you're doing the reflex, make sure that it's a quick, rapid, it's not a funk down and hold it, it's a quick, rapid tap. So we'll do that again. And again, we want to make sure that we do that bilaterally. All right. So we also want to be able to do the triceps reflex. For the triceps reflex, again, we need the tendon, the arm to be relaxed, but the tendon to also be under some stretch. So we need the arm to be bent. So generally, we'll hold the patient's arm out to the side, um, and have their arm bent. And let me hold as much of the weight as, it, as I can. Okay. And again, strike the triceps tendon with the reflex direct, hammer directly. And again, you notice a slight swinging of the arm out laterally when that's struck. And again, make sure you do the same thing on both sides. And so just relax the weight into my hand. And you notice the slight jerk of the arm outward. So finally, we're going to do the patellar reflex and the Achilles reflex in the lower extremity. So for this one here, make sure you find the patellar tendon and just relax your leg as best as you can. And the same thing on the other side. So this patient has good brisk reflexes. They're not hyperreflexic, um, but they're easy to see. Some individuals' reflexes are much more subtle than that and a little harder to see. Finally, we want to do the Achilles reflex. If I let the leg dangle like this, the Achilles tendon is relaxed and not under any stretch. So you want to push up on the foot so that the tendon is stretched. And it's generally easier to strike it with the back of a hammer, but you can strike it with the foot. So again, just relax as best as you can. And then the same thing on the other side. Try that one more time. All right. So the next reflex we want to do is the plantar response reflex, which is also referred to as the Babinski. So what you're going to have the patient do is if you could move back on the table a little bit for me, I'm going to pull out the footrest. And so what you want to do this is you're going to run an object relatively firmly across the dorsal aspect, excuse me, the plantar aspect of the foot. And you want to make sure you use something clean and new each time um, so that you're not, again, transferring things back and forth between patients. Because this is a relatively firm pressure. So we generally use a new tongue blade for that. Um, what you're going to do is on the sole of the foot, you're going to run the tongue leg up the side and towards the midline. You want to do it relatively quickly um, and with decent pressure. This isn't a tickling motion. You want it to be relatively firm. Um, and you want to watch for the direction that the toes curl. All right. So I'm just going to run this uh, tongue blade across the bottom of your foot. Now you notice it was a subtle motion, but his toes curled towards the plantar surface of the foot. So toes down going is the normal response. If when I did that motion, his toes pointed upwards, that would be upward going toes or an abnormal response to the Babinski. 